Hey folks, I'm here. So this is Macrometrics Dashboard, video 3, 6th of July, uh, because the property and stock market is not an indicator of economic health. So this will be a very quick video today. We've got two pretty cool bits of news. Let's get into it. So I'm going to continue doing these videos until it's evidently abundant, abundantly obvious to the public that um, something's fishy and more shit is about to hit the fan because right now, uh, even though it's obvious to me, um, average Joe on the street doesn't and they, they see these rising stock market uh, prices and go, oh, everything's alright. So um, going back to the metrics, so first of all, um, yeah. I, th I think this chapter here, the delinquencies and bankruptcies and bailouts, I should add in, um, yeah, there, there is a, another one. So basically, um, the world's largest pension fund loses $165 billion in one quarter. Um, so here is that article. And it's basically a Japanese uh, pension fund. And I guess the thing that really hits home to me um, is I've been saying that pension funds are are not safe for for many many years now, and people think, oh, you know, well, I'm just going to give it to someone with an alphabet of letters after my name to look after my money, and and that's unfortunately what a lot of people think. Um, and pretty much every decade we see a global crash, and all of these pension funds take an absolute hammering, uh, and people never learn. So, yeah, I mean, this doesn't really mean too much for us in the UK. Um, however, this is just giving you a little taste of uh, that everyone is suffering, um, as in mainstream, uh, main street, sorry, Wall Street, um, and that there's more to come because this is just every one of these things that I'm, I'm sharing in the videos are little dominoes. So this domino is going to knock over a few more dominoes, etc. Um, and unfortunately, I, I just feel sorry for people who have pensions in this, you know, all the Japanese pensioners. Um, and it's an even worse state over here in the UK. Um, I think it's something, off the top of my head, it's something like 93% um, unfunded liabilities. It's, it's ridiculous. So that is a, a, a bad thing, I guess. And, and over here, remember, health metrics are these stuff over here, but the central banks and governments will do all of this to try and prop up and uh, obscure all of this. And so one of the things they're going to do which I mentioned in many other videos is eventually helicopter money. Helicopter money is basically where cash or funds makes its way directly to the people, not to the greedy banks, etc. And in this article, basically Rishi is considering giving um, vouchers to every adult and maybe kids um, to try and kickstart the economy. And because the retail and hospitality um, sectors have just the lying face down in the water. I mean, yesterday, Ellie and I did dinner, and that's our thing. We go to dinner, then go to the cinema, and we did it for the first time. And honestly, it's the whole user experience is now just a joke. Like going into uh, the restaurant, we had to, they had to take our details down for track and tracing, um, which I really wasn't happy um, about. And then. Everyone's wearing, you know, masks, etc. It's like you're going into a bloody contaminated war zone. Um, and then the cinema was just even worse. It's like being in school and in prison at the same time. You, they lead you to your seat. There's like only three spots per row. And then there's a row free in front and behind you. So you'll never get someone obscuring your, your view anymore. But like cinemas are screwed. Retail is screwed. So yeah, um, cinemas especially. So just watch them go bust. All of them. Because... Uh, I don't know how they can even break break even now. Um, so yeah, with this one, this is um, quite interesting. So what he's trying to do is give people, let's say, something something like a five hundred pound voucher to um, spend in certain face to face retail stores. Okay, so it's good for the business owners that I mean, I've got two retail businesses which are screwed at the moment, and I can't even one of them. I'm not even allowed to open. Like it's still forced shut, um, which is annoying. But um. So yeah, it, it looks like he's been taking pointers from my previous metro, macro metrics videos because uh, here he said that um, temporary VAT cut, blah, blah, blah. Um, sorry. Uh, 
yeah, a VAT cut will do uh, less for lower income families because they tend to spend more of their money on VAT exempt items or reduced or zero rated goods. And yeah, effectively that just helps the business owner really um, because what tends to happen if there is a VAT cut, businesses don't necessarily drop their prices. Uh, so all that does is it increases the margins of most business, business owners, which isn't a bad thing. Um, we are literally struggling right now, or every business owner pretty much. Um, and I think, yeah, it's worth having a little Google. We well, Obviously, we don't have the real results at the moment, but um, a really nifty thing I think that they'll do is put a time limit on these vouchers. Uh, they'll probably make it, you know, you can't transfer it from person to person, but and they'll, they'll have a time limit, like you have to spend this 500 quid within 30 days or 60 days or something like that. Um, personally, I'd like to try and, if I got one of these, I'd try and sell mine for, I don't know, 450 quid to someone. So I get the cash and then I can use that for an asset. Or if you, you know, um, wanted to try and be productive with it, if you can't transfer it, buy 500 quid's worth of stuff that you could sell for a profit. So buy 500 quid's worth of blah and then try and, and then, you know, that could be your first little product in your new side hustle business. Anyway, um, that's all for now. Just a quick one. Um, and remember, they would not be doing all this sort of stuff if everything was back to normal. Uh, so yeah, just don't be fooled by the media.